Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for a virtual tour of Vulcan Park and Museum. I'm Casey and I work in the education department here. I'm so excited to have you and I hope that you enjoy this introduction to our museum which focuses on the history of the city of Birmingham and of course Vulcan himself. Today we will be learning about modern day Birmingham. If you have any questions please comment below and be sure to follow us on social media for updates and info about our next episode. Thank you. Birmingham as we know it today is quite different from the industrial Birmingham of the past, but it still embodies the same entrepreneurial spirit. The spirit that harnessed this area's mineral resources to birth a new city, and the same spirit that forged a colossal sculpture of Vulcan to represent it. After the struggles of the civil rights movement spurred new legislation, integration, and a new reality for Birmingham citizens, the 1970s brought a wave of new challenges to the city. Deindustrialization was changing the fabric of the city. New processes in the manufacture of iron and steel and competition from abroad caused many of Birmingham's iron and steel plants and mines to close down. They were simply not economical to run anymore. Furnaces went cold and workers whose families had labored in these industries for generations found themselves without the only livelihood they had ever known. The rise in automobile traffic and travel necessitated new and larger roadways to accommodate all of the cars. New interstate highways sliced through historic neighborhoods in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, especially black neighborhoods such as Smithfield. And middle class people, especially white middle class people, moved to the suburbs. This phenomenon was known as white flight and happened all over the country as city planning embraced the idea of suburban living and automobile commutes and the city's lost industrial jobs. Zoning practices in federal, state, and local governments made it nearly impossible for black families to buy property in the suburbs, so many remained in the city. Demographics in Birmingham changed to reflect these new realities. The city's population declined as populations in suburban areas grew and racial and socioeconomic segregation increased. Resourceful responses to the city's problems helped to reinvigorate the city to realize its new potential. Revitalization efforts in the 1970s preserved many of Birmingham's historic neighborhoods, buildings, and landmarks. City leaders worked to attract new industry to Birmingham and kickstart the economy. Mergers of local banks helped to establish Birmingham as a banking industry hotspot, and the University of Alabama at Birmingham's transformation from a small satellite campus into a nationally recognized medical research center turned it into a major economic driver for the city. This period is also when former industrial sites began to shift to recreational and cultural uses. Ruffner Mountain Nature Preserve was established on land that was once ore mines and quarries. The decommissioned Sloss Furnaces was preserved as a National Historic Landmark, one of the first 20th century industrial history sites to receive such a designation. Environmental groups also succeeded in efforts to clean up the Cahaba River and the Black Warrior River. Today, Birmingham City Center is thriving and continues to attract residents and newcomers to the city. When you look at the Birmingham skyline from Vulcan, you can see that UAB and Children's Hospital anchor the city's south side. These facilities provide care to patients from across the region and have produced significant breakthroughs in medical research. You can also see the downtown financial center, home to the banking industry that is a big part of the city's economy today. To the west, Mercedes-Benz and its suppliers produce and assemble automobiles. Birmingham is also home to important cultural resources. The Birmingham Museum of Art is home to world-renowned collections. The Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, created in the 1990s to educate about the city's critical role in the civil rights movement, now anchors the Civil Rights District and a recently dedicated Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument. Nearby, Barber Motorsports Museum is home to the largest collection of motorcycles in the world. McWayne Science Center provides hands-on science exhibits and educational programming for children and adults. Shortly after the restored Vulcan reopened, other ambitious projects brought Birmingham together in support of revitalizing the city center. The opening of a new green space in downtown Birmingham created from the city's abandoned railroad reservation unified the north and south sides of the city. Since its 2010 opening, Railroad Park has spurred development in Birmingham ranging from the construction of a new Regions Field for the Birmingham Barons baseball team to new living spaces, new restaurants, and new businesses. Vulcan continues to stand as the region's great icon. He stands for the dreams and potential that are in all of us. He stands for progress and points the way for our hopes for the future. He stands for Birmingham. 
all of Birmingham.